Okay, and we are back again. Um, this time, our special guest number two is Philippe Coutinho. And he has another suggestion for something that might correlate with winning. And that is apparently shots from distance. Um, Liverpool fans, you'll know this. Uh, Philippe Coutinho likes taking a lot of crazy shots from outside the box, uh, from you know, long range. He scores some of them. He doesn't score far more of them than he scores. But he's a big believer that his shots from distance, and shots from distance in general, will improve his team's likelihood of winning. So let's take a look. For that, it's time to go to Excel. Um, I'm not really believing in what Coutinho is telling us here. Um, I tend to watch Liverpool's games and I see him give away possession quite a bit. Um, but he thinks it's important, so let's go on over to Excel and test it. So we're back. And once again, we're going to look at shots outside the area to test Coutinho's theory that the more shots outside the area you take, the better your team does. First thing, as always, we do the eyeball test. And looking at this vector, again, we have it organized. This is 2014-2015 data, um, organized in terms of lowest points to highest points. So if you look here, you see you know, QPR has one of the highest shots outside the area. Um, of all the Premier League that year, and obviously they did worse than any other team. So not a good start for Coutinho's hypothesis. But as you look here, these the bottom teams tend to be around four, low fives. Um, Mid-table teams, there's some variation, but we're starting to see some higher numbers, Everton and Crystal Palace notwithstanding. And then the top six teams all were in the five, six, seven range. There may be some evidence to support his idea here. Um, it doesn't look as clear as the last one, but maybe there's something there. So the first thing we do, there's Mango walking by behind me instead of my face this time, that's nice. Um, the first thing we do is we just click on a random cell, do our formula equals Corel, array one, array two, and there's a correlation of 0.3959, so about 0.40. Not bad, but again, remember that number goes from 0 to 1, and this time that number's well below 1. It's not nearly as high as the 0.8 something we had last time. Uh, the correlation between shots outside the area and total points over a season is much lower. So it's still positive, it's still in the right direction, it's still a decent number, but it's not nearly as good as last time. Um, once again, let's do a quick scatter plot here. So we're going to highlight our two columns, click insert, click scatter plot, click the first one, and here we go. So we reformat it, make it look nicer. Axis title is gone. Undo that. Let's try again. Click inside the box. Shots inside the area per 90 minutes minutes. Access title here is total points. Chart title is Coutinho should shoot from closer. Delete that. Edit this real quick. And again, I'm just trying to clean up the graph, get rid of some chart junk. Uh, lowest number we have is about four, so we do it there. There we go. As you can see, this isn't nearly as steep of a line as the last one. And it's not nearly as close of a dispersion as we saw last time. This will be more clear in the RGG plot version, but again, I just wanted to show you how easy it is. I mean, that was, I'm not good at Excel, quite frankly, and that took me, you know, how long? 20 30 seconds once the data were collected it's pretty easy it's pretty easy to do and right here you've just put together something you could share on Twitter with people um, it's interesting it's visually instructive and it answers an important question do shots outside the area do long shots matter so let's head on back to PowerPoint and see what's next and we're back so as we showed in the last graph, and this graph here should look pretty familiar, just nicer than the last one because it's done in R, it's done in ggplot. 
pass the ball, Coutinho. Stop shooting from these crazy distances and giving away possession. Again, the correlation here is 0 0.4, which is weak. It's, it's there, it's positive, but it's weak. We also see some of the big teams here. Chelsea, Man City, and Arsenal, three of the top four that season. Pretty big outliers. Man United, the other team, pretty big outlier. They're not taking nearly as many shots outside the area, yet they did very well. On the other side, QPR takes the second most shots outside the area, and they scored the fewest points. This line isn't nearly as steep as you want to be. The 95% confidence interval is pretty broad. The evidence isn't looking good for Philippe Coutinho. So, again, this shows us the correlation, 0.4. You ask the question, should teams take shots outside the area? And the answer is, mm, maybe, but not really. There's second level considerations taken into consideration here, but just from the pure analytics point of view, take fewer shots from distance. We have a question from Pep Guardiola, so let's head back to him. So Pep's asking me, shouldn't you just take shots closer to goal? Isn't that a better way of doing it? Just like possession, you work the ball into the box, you wait for the right opportunity, and you take that high-value shot, the one that's likely to go into the net. Um, he's very upset with Coutinho's idea here. He would never have him on his team, so don't look for Coutinho to join Manchester City next year. Shots closer to goal is what Pep thinks correlates with winning. So let's go ahead and find out. Let's test Pep's theory again, see if he's right. Back to Excel. We're back once again, and I've got another spreadsheet here with some data. Shots inside the area, shots inside the penalty box, per 90 minutes for each team. Let's eyeball it again. Teams on the bottom of the scale, pretty low. In the 5, 6, Leicester was in the 7 range. Maybe that was evidence they should have done a little bit better. QPR also in the 7 range, though, so maybe not. As we get to the top you know, 7 here, Southampton through Chelsea, you see a pretty dramatic jump. Um, Everton's the only group in that league who isn't here. Spurs, not as much, but they're all in the 8, 9, or even Man City 11 range. Lower numbers tend to be associated with lower point scores. Higher numbers tend to be associated with higher point scores. So Pep's theory is looking pretty good. Shots inside the area are a better predictor, it looks like, than shots outside the area. But because we're doing analytics here, let's test it. So again, equals Corel. Array 1, you can just type these in too if you want. So you can just do C2 to C21. 0.72, much higher correlation, almost as high as possession. Much better correlation than shots outside the area. Things are looking really good here. Pep Guardiola, he seems to know a thing or two about soccer. Um, so, once again, do our scatter plot, highlight it, scatter, couple clicks. Delete that because I don't like it. Change the format. Inside the area per 90. I said delete that. Total points earned. Pep is right again. Change the axis. And these are good sort of habits to get into, changing these things, making your charts look better. Good visual presentation. We'll spend quite a bit of time on this at some point in a couple lectures. It is important to good presentation. People look at these sorts of things, and it's so simple in Excel. It's so unbelievably simple. I mean, I was doing that while I was talking, and it took me a minute. And again, I'm not an Excel pro by any stretch of the imagination. And here you go. Pep is right again. If you look at this compared to the other one, the dispersion's a lot closer, the slope looks to be a lot more steep, life is good. And I'm actually going to go ahead and copy the other one into this, so hold on one second and I'll show you them both. Back again. So take a look at these two graphs. Look at the dispersion here. Look how far apart all these points are versus how close all these points are here. There's a big difference between these two. You want to see the dispersion be very close to that sort of best fit line, which we'll see in a second on the GG plot. This line, they're all far away. This, they're all going to be fitting pretty closely. Man City will be the one exception. But that's what you have going on here. Pep's graph looks much better than Coutinho's. 
shots inside the area per 90. This should say shots outside the area. I just realized we'll fix that. Shots outside the area per 90. Inside wins. The correlation's higher. The graph looks better. Life is good. All we're doing here is just answering questions, turning that intuition you have. I mean, you've probably thought about the idea of, man, I wish Coutinho would stop taking those flailing shots from 10 yards outside the box. This is all you have to do. We're putting a formal intuition to something you've already been thinking. So that's analytics. It's easy. It's fun. Life is good. We're back again, and Pep is right one more time. He's doing well. Here's the same graph again in ggplot. Look how many of the points are within that 95% confidence interval, and even most of the ones outside it aren't that far outside. Um, there's Chelsea. There's actually Man City over there looking pretty good. Life is good. Everything tends to work out. We're learning correlation is higher for shots inside the area than it was for outside the area. This is analytics. Again, it's simple. It's easy. We're getting to talk to Pep Guardiola a lot. We're validating a lot of his theories about the game. Life is good. So a couple more examples, and then we're going to wrap this up. I want to show you a couple different things. But first, we have a question from our special guest, Everton goalkeeper and U.S. men's national team legend Tim Howard. And Tim wants to know, what about blocked shots? Do blocked shots increase your chances of winning? The more blocked shots you have, the more likely you are to win, maybe, right? Well, let's find out. 